Hello, this is Eric Moody up in Waldeboro, Maine, Midcoast, Maine, about an hour up from Portland. And I'm standing outside my studio here, give you a little slice, mini slice of life here um, in my metalworking business. Um, so real quick, this is my studio and this is my house, which I usually rent out in the summer and then I live in the studio above the above the shop, but uh, let me take you inside. Welcome to Fields and Supply. It's a pretty exciting thing that they're, what they're able to do in this uh, online virtual market, but they're doing a great job, so I hope you're enjoying it. So here we go. And um, here is the shop. Um, and this, the chat box, you can ask questions. Um, I'm gonna look at it occasionally, but probably mostly in the ends to answer any questions. I'll sit down and try to go through them. So um, so think of what you want to ask and just type it in the box and I'll get back to it. So this is um, this is a, like a late 1800s, early 1900s post and beam barn. And so the studio's down here. And I'll give you just a quick tour first of my work. If you're not familiar with it, I can show you. This is the one of the tables I would have at the fair uh, by the Hudson River. but um, so I'm trying to get used to this little gimbal tripod, but here is some of the work. And um, I think since July, I now have a lot more of this brand new, new work, this sort of laminated black and steel and stainless and pressed stainless pieces um, that are just starting to be produced. So, um, I think they can be ordered on the site, but they're not live on my site yet. Um, and so the machines will turn around. As we have, this is a bridge port, which is a fancy drill press. Um, you can slot, you can change the angle of the head in different ways. And this is how basically the chopstick um, joints that have this angled joint on them, they get machined in a milling machine. So you have a nice precise uh, joint so the fit up is, is really tight and secure. Um, we have a hydraulic press, which is, I think, for those of you who didn't see the July one, um, sort of going over the similar things, but slightly different examples. But um, this is basically like a car jack, very heavy duty car jack. And then you can make these forms. So when you push into them, they'll take shapes for, so um, just you can do a you know just a simple bent um, piece of steel um, this is an aluminum uh, piece for a museum to hold all their brochures and to get this curved piece um, I can form it in there and then on the on some of my work the press brass work which is it's which is new that's these, whoo, the gimbal doesn't want to go around. These guys, um, these guys get their shape in the brass by pressing brass sheet into a, a form. So this brass sheet gets laid over and gets pressed and takes on that form. And then it gets cut out and wrapped and shaped around the, the charred maple handles. Um, and we can come over here is a lathe. Um, so here, so I do architectural metal work on commission too. So when architects or homeowners need cabinet hardware or I used to do railings and furniture and outfitting restaurants and stuff. Um, these bigger machines came in more handy more often, but they come in handy still. But the lathe can turn and carve a little little pieces, if you can see that, or bigger pieces. This was a, a newel post with a crystal ball that sat on top for a stairway. Um, then we have my heat, which it is a nice brisk fall day, so that's pretty cozy. Gets me into the shop working <laughs> when it's usually warmer in here than my house. Um, then we have our sanding machine. This is the, new, the newest pal of the shop um, and 
different finishing equipment. We have a torch. This is my welder, which is small yet very powerful. And then we have a kiln, which is an enameling kiln, but I haven't used it for enameling yet. This is where I heat treat the oyster knives. So to get the, the blade steel um, heated and hardened and tempered in a way that it'll be flexible yet durable and not snap um, to get those little critters open. Um, and we have a cold saw. This is where I chop metal. Um, and then we have, hopefully I don't get you guys dizzy, drill press, bandsaw in the back here. Pretty fairly simple old school layout. Um, anything that's super specialty, I'll outsource if I need to, but most of the stuff is done in here. Um, and then I also just have some stuff out on the table here of examples of things that are sort of in progress. So, um, well, this, let me get this gimbal to work. Here's my anvil, um, trusty, beautiful little thing. These are chopsticks that are in the works. So these are almost finished. I think I, I just showed you them before. These are them, these are glued and pinned, but they don't have the tapered shape on them. These are aluminum and brass. I mean, ebony pinned to aluminum with brass. Um, the pie server and the knife um, server that have um, these forged steel handles. These handles start off as these the many different bends on them. This is the first bend, so I have a few going here. And then I lay them out on this drawing to mark where the next bend goes. And then I bend them, what I call this fulcrum jig. It's basically just, you know, these two bars and you kind of put it in here and use leverage to sort of nibble and bend um, to get the curves just right. Um, and then we have some of the architectural hardware stuff that I've done. So you've got some of these are just Come on, the camera. These are just different um, drawer pulls and cabinet pulls. These are um, little wall hooks. They have a little mount disc on them for an artist to hang her pieces. Bronze hooks that are welded. Sorry, camera, <laughs> camera issue. Um, and these are welded bronze and patina. They get mortised into doors. And then I'm moving fast because we don't have that much time. I want to get to questions. And then here we have, hang on a minute. My, there we go, my camera gimbal just went to sleep. So here we have, um, these are pieces in process for um, the coffee scoops. These are the copper bowls that um, that start as spun copper, and then I reform them to be a little bit fuller, and then give them a, a little peening on the outside to, to reinforce and strengthen the edge. Um, and these get riveted on, onto the handles here. And um, these are ladles, so I have a bunch of these ready to go. Similar process, it's just a bigger handle. These are stainless steel. So these are all cut out and shaped, but they need to be sanded and sculpted to have more definition in the profile. And then they get forged to wrap around. I don't have any finished ones to show you. Um, they were just featured in Sabur magazine. And so I've sold out of a couple of batches and I'm in the middle of another one. So I don't have any to show. Um, and um, let me check to see what we're doing with questions, if there's anything coming up yet. What's, let me set you guys down, set the camera down. Um, what's the hardest part of my trade is one of the questions that came in. Um, I would say um, finding help is probably the hardest part. So for one person, it's pretty difficult to try to um, 
do a lot of this stuff on your own when you're trying to make and do the admin. Um, so I often will have assistants helping and and try to delegate office stuff. Um, and it's it's tricky even finding people whether they're trained or training them um, to be able to do such unique work um, in the in the shop at least. Um, that's been the trickiest. I've had really great assistance. Um, and then up here in Maine, I think it's a little bit trickier to find people. But um, yeah, if anyone's looking, you can always contact me. <laughs> um, somebody else has asked, where do you find your inspiration? Um, I'd say the first, the first way or first place I'd go to for inspiration when I look at new designs is probably um, uh, just looking at antiques, looking at um, examples of antiques of something similar. So um, the pie server started out as inspired by um, what's in my own um, kitchen drawer. So I have a lot of antique cooking utensils. And so there's some that I really like the look of, and also I love the, the way it feels and the way that it works. Um, so trying to take what I like out of that and then making it my own from what I know about how metal works um, and how metal moves and how metal's shaped um, and, uh, and start sort of diverging from what I've seen in the antique world a little bit. Um, so I'd say, yeah, antiques, but also the material itself, because a lot of times I won't do a lot of planning ahead of time or designing. I'll plan a little bit, but, um, I don't do a lot of designing and testing and designing and testing. I'll usually just go into the shop with some kind of concept, just like what it is, like the pie server. And I'll just start getting material out and working with it and, having that idea of the antique that's in my mind and sort of see what the material wants to do. Um, and it kind of is a collaboration between me and the materials and the tooling. Um, what's your favorite products that I sell? What's my favorite product that I sell? Um, that's a tricky one. Um, you know, I think I think probably the newer pieces are always a little bit of a favorite because they're newer and I haven't made them uh, that much. I'm still sort of getting to know them as I make the small batches. But um, but I do like you know there is a connection with each piece. You know, every time I make I usually make batches of twelve just because my hands and my patience and just the keeping the quality level um, to where I feel like I have control of the quality. I like making smaller batches. And um, and I don't know, there's, there's an intimacy with each one when I go to make them because I think about how it came to be, who had suggested the idea, or who was, it, who was that first piece for um, that then became a piece that I make more and more. Um, so, yeah. Um, I think the brass serving trio is probably the ones that I actually have in my kitchen. A lot of the other ones I don't have. Um, so that that's a favorite to have these little little brass spoon and a brass fork and a brass knife. I use those every day, and so I think about them every day. So those may be my favorite, but it changes a lot. Is there somewhere in Maine you go to get inspired? Um, Maine's a beautiful place. Um, I think inspiration, um, there's inspiration for design and then there's inspiration, I guess, more for the soul, you know, and trying to re-energize and, um, and clear your head, you know, of what gets scrambled up inside there. <laughs> I don't think I'm the only one that probably gets a, this jumbled mess up there of everything that's going on in the world and in your life and so having that having places where you can go and, and uh, natural beauty I think is just something that's um, just wipes the slate clean and gives me a new sense of energy and I think um, there's a lot of places to walk near the sea 
which I love, the ocean or being out on the water is even better. So going sailing or going boating and being out and, and paddling out or sailing out to an island and seeing the space and the water and the sky um, is, is a big thing for me. Um, and are there any other questions for anybody else? I can also, or if Chad, I don't know if you have any questions, I could put you on the spot. <laughs> oh, okay. The form for which the, the copper bowls Yes, so Chad, uh, who you can hear, was just asking what material the form is that um, that I use to shape the copper bowls. And so I start with a, a spun form on the bigger pieces. The smaller spoons I'll form in a dapping block. So it's metal. So if you, this is a, a dapping block. So you have these, these um, a metal form, and then you have a, uh, sized um, ball, like a mortar and pestle kind of. So if you put your sheet metal disc in here and then you hammer this into it, it presses it into the shape. Um, so for the copper bowls for the coffee scoops, um, so this one would be, so there's all these different sizes. So this wouldn't go in there. I think I use one actually a little bit bigger because these bowls are a little bit fuller and I don't want to mar the edge. So I would, that one's not it. This, nope, that one's not it. <laughs> this one. So um, this gives it a fuller shape. And then, and then I use this in the vise I put it in the vise and then I put the, the copper ball over it and then I use that as a form to peen the outside, which not only gives it those nice little facets, but it also makes it uh, more rigid and more durable for use. Um, and then on the ladles, they're much bigger. What I do is I would anneal these, would heat them with a torch and then I will form it a little bit fuller. These are spun copper. And then I form it a little bit fuller once I've heated and annealed it by over this, this ball. Um, actually, I'll do it this way. I have some sand in here. So this is a, a cast steel swage block. So it has all these different spoon shapes and bowls. So I'll put the copper in there. Then I'll put the stainless ball in here. And then I have this brass hammer which doesn't mar the ball, so it stays nice and round, but it gives the force in there. And I won't do it now because these are, are not annealed, so it would just wrinkle. Um, so what I, what I do is I have it on this little stone block on a Lazy Susan, and then I heat it with a torch until it's um, annealed or softened. It doesn't need to stay hot. Um, usually they'll cool and then I'll, I'll form it in there. And then I use the ball again to, uh, to peen the outside so that it, and then uh, that heating, it also gives it this darker color. And then that brighter lip on there, I don't know if it's focusing, is just to uh, soften the edge because when you peen it, it gets a little sharp out there. Peening, not a good word. Um, peening is hammering with a ball peen hammer. So there's the ball end and when you're peening, it's kind of like pinching in between the ball of the hammer and the, the metal hardened metal form. So the metal is pinched between the two, which, um, which, uh, textures the surface but um and 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 with that ball you're getting these tiny little 
divots. Although I'm actually using the flat side on that because I like the way it looks better with the flat side than the, so instead of little divots, you get little facets because the way the light hits it, I think is a little bit more interesting. Um, that could be called, I'm not a jeweler, but it could be planishing is more when you're hitting it with the flat side of the hammer to try to get out um, marks. You just do little hammer marks over and over and over again until you get this almost smooth or as smooth as possible surface. Um, and peening is more with the ball peen. So it's, it's but because I'm doing it to rigid, well, <laughs> I'm not a jeweler, so I'm not going to go that far into the description between the peening and planishing, but it's basically peening it with the ball peen hammer so that you're, um, you're hardening the edges. Um, and let me see, I have a couple other questions here. Hang on. Um, do I have those form? Oh, okay, that's your question. When you collaborate with designers and architects on a commission, what's the process like? Um, so uh, it can be a couple of different ways. One way is architects will approach me with a sketch, whether it's full-fledged, you know, drawing, like architectural drawing with full dimensions. Um, although usually that's not the case. It's usually they have a concept. So it's either like a napkin sketch or um, just a rough sketch of the of the idea of how they want it to look like or examples of what they've seen that they like. Um, but they want it a little bit more like that or this. Um, then I will, um, I will refine or think about how something like that is to be constructed, how it's going to be engineered and give them a rough ballpark of cost for, you know, for how many they'd want based on what the material is and you know what it's going to look like and if it looks like it's in their budget then i'll refine um refine the drawing and refine the price and then um and then we go from there so the the pieces that i showed over there on the table the bigger pieces um so these these guys these three guys were designed by an architect and they were pretty specific with what the overall look is going to be. But then I had to figure out, you know, the time and cost it, it would take to engineer how to make this. So what are the people, you know, where are the joints? How does it pull? How does it, how does it get constructed? How does it get engineered to make it as easy as, or most efficient as possible for the client um, to be made? And then I come up with drawings that get sent to a CNC cutter, a computer controlled cutter. And so all the pieces are cut and then I get the pieces and it's like putting a puzzle together um, of tacking and weld tacking it together. It's kind of like stitch tacking or pinning with a weld and then fully weld it and then finish it and then mail it to them. Um, and then the other pieces in here um, you know, like, like these little, little poles, um, these, an architect said they wanted, um, they wanted some poles that were like the pie server handles. So I tried to come up with some ideas on how to replicate that sort of an idea in different, um, styled poles, um, and just made a few different styles and then presented them to them to see what they liked and they picked out what they liked and then I went from there. Um, and yes, the shape of the hammer does detect how the metal, it's amazing. The, and it's not just how it looks. It's it, the shape of the hammer doesn't, uh, in addition to, to making the metal look a certain way, depending on the shape of the hammer, it also moves the metal in a different way. So, a ball and on a hammer, a ball peen moves metal in all different directions radially, where if you have a, a hammer that is flat, it doesn't move the metal as, as far in every direction. It'll still move radially if you hammer uh, pretty 
centered down, but then you have then you have a hammer like this that's called a cross peen. And on this kind of a hammer, the metal moves more in opposing directions of that cross peen. So it moves more like that and less like this. So when you're forging, which some of the handles I'll forge with the torch here on the anvil, if I wanna stretch or lengthen a piece, more than make it wider, then if you use the cross peen, you can thin the metal as well as make it longer, but not make it as wide. So you have a lot of control um, about what shape your piece is gonna be and how efficient your hammer marks are gonna be based on the, the shape of the hammer head. Um, and like for riveting, you know, you wanna use, you know, rivets, you can, you have a little rod you put through the holes of all your pieces. And if you use a ball peen hammer on the end, it expands the head of that rod so that it mushrooms out and creates a sort of a, like a little nail head. Um, and you're gonna get more expansion of the metal with the ball peen or the cross peen than you would as the flat end. And you wanna move as much metal, mushroom it out as much as possible to get a good uh, pin in your piece. Um, somebody is asking, uh, they say, I love your workshop. Is there a place that gets the most use? Um, the, I'd say the Sanders and the, I mean, sitting at the workbench and working is, um, pretty common. Um, I'm not really on the bandsaw that much. I'm not really on the drill press that much. Um, so it's basically between my, my sanding machines um, I'm sanding machines over here where I'm sanding and shaping the thickness and the thin, the thinness of the, of the handles on pieces or profiling the shapes, um, and, and refining the, the surface texture and everything. So I'll use a really coarse sander to hog out a shape really, um, really fast in the metal since metal takes a lot to remove stock. So um, I'll use a really coarse, coarse sanding disc or sanding belt, and then I'll go to finer and finer grits. And then I finish with this, um, this magical Scotch-Brite wheel that um, this guy is what I finish everything on. It's like a robust kitchen scouring sponge with some abrasive in it. And it gives it a really nice soft finish that I can then hand burnish. So once I finish that, then I use these, again, another type of scouring kitchen sponge that's a little bit more coarse. And then I hand burnish everything to give it that satiny sort of random burnished look. Um, so I think that sanding is probably the, uh, where I'm at the most, <laughs> or I'm hand filing or sanding or attaching and riveting and assembling everything. Um, very good. Um, what else? Oh, there was one other thing I was going to show. Um, it's not really metalworking, but it's kind of fun is that the, the, um, all the pieces get these little hang tags on them, right? That have my logo and name on them. And so each of those marks, and that's my logo that's on the website, and it's also um, it's also stamped. If you can, if it's going to focus in there, it's not going to focus. It's stamped in every every piece that I make. But the way that that ori originated is um, in this little branding stamp that I made long time ago, way before I was doing this um, type of work. But this is a piece of rod that I heated and chiseled out the little emblem. And then this is ready to go where I heat the end and then uh, get my gimbal to work. And then I have all my cards here. And when it's hot, I brand each one um, by hand and then every piece gets tagged with that. 
Um, so it's, it's always kind of a fun thing that I like to do when I run out of tags. It's inconvenient, but I'm like, oh, I get to brand things now. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> Think of anything, Chad? All right. Well, thank you guys for watching and coming along with the tour with me. And um, if you have any other questions, you can always contact me, I think, uh, through the, the site. And I believe that there's um, a... There's, uh, my work is below what they're looking at. So there's a button that says Shop Eric Moody. So you can click that and you can see um, the gallery of the work, um, including the new work that is just right hot off the press, if you could even call it that. I think in there I say that they're shipping a little bit later than usual because they're they're so brand new. But um, um, but yeah, this is great. It's great to be part of this uh, field and supply. Thank you, Chad, and thank you, everybody there. This is uh, have have fun, everybody. This is fun shopping. I can't wait to be looking around myself. <laughs> Bye.